Hi, my name's Janelle Burdell, aka Udu Girl, and this is the Udu Drum. And I'm about to perform an improvised piece that I like to call The Story of Udu. The Udu is from Nigeria, and traditionally, it's played by women. We imagine the women sat around at the end of the day like we're doing, and shared stories, food, laughter, and their problems. Folklore has it that someone dropped one and a second hole was formed, which gives it a kind of pitch change. This pitch change deems its name the Voices of Ancestors because it's believed the only sound to cross over. Welcome to Fishing Without Bait, a lifetime without definitive expectations, where serendipity and synchronicity collide and make something beautiful, where we make one plus one equal more than two. Intrigued, interested? So perhaps step back and look at this situation. Well, we help people understand that it's hard to read the label when you're inside the bottle. And as we walk through life, as we stroll through life without definitive expectations, and if we pay attention on purpose, quite often, if we're aware, there'll be people, situations, events that come into our life that have some meaning to us. And just recently, one of those situations happened to us, a fishing without bait crowd, where we reconnected and we never disconnected. We reconnected and reestablished our relationship with our good friend, Miss Janelle Burdell. Miss Janelle, welcome to the show. Oh, it's so nice to be here, Jim. Thank you. So, Janelle, tell us a, tell us a little bit about how you hatched and how you happen to be sitting on our couch today. Well, as you know, my name is Janelle Burdell, and I'm a professional drummer. Um, I've had the great chance to work with a lot of cool artists. Um, at the same time, I've ha had the uh, great fortune of being on the vanguard of group drumming and its many benefits. Benefits like boosting your immune system and boosting cancer fighting cells and instant relief from anxiety and depression. And from those meager starts, I bumped into you, actually both of you, at a place called Seclair. And that's where we first had the chance to work together, actually, Jim, working with a group of individuals and bringing this kind of rhythm awareness and playfulness 
into the space and really helping people to find some new direction and some new ways of balance in the, balancing their lives and enjoying their lives, I felt. So what we try to do is open up possibilities to people. We don't try to change anyone. What we try to do is offer lifestyle changes and lifestyle enhancements and ask people to have that beginner's mind and quite possibly to look at what they could add into their life. And when we talk about this holistic lifestyle, Janelle, when we talk about the mind-body-spirit aspect, we're always looking for, there's no one particular molecule, there's no one particular energy medicine, there's no one particular uh, chiropractor, there's no one uh, acupuncture, there's no one Ricky, there's no one anything that's going to help someone, although there's some folks who will tell you that. So what we help people do is mix and match and what we offer do a smorgasbord like an artist with a palette and a whole variety of paintings and techniques. And what we try to do is open that canvas up and they can pick and choose what is meaningful for them. So why don't you share with uh, our audience uh, how this drumming, how this situation became meaningful to you? Well, originally I was working with the Grateful Dead drummer Mickey Hart in his studio and at the time, he was funding a lot of the research, co-funding with Remo, the great drum company, Remo. And they were funding a lot of the research around this work. And I just sort of caught it on the sidebar and started working with it, doing facilitating drumming circles of my own with women in Northern California. And with, uh, I was then asked to, deal with some troubled youth. So let's back up. Could we back up just mm -hmm. a moment and talk about your encounter with Mickey Hart? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big one. I was brought on to work with Mickey Hart uh, in building his electronic rig, which he calls Ramu, and developing his sample library and trying to give him a broader access to a bigger palette of sounds, like you were saying. So in order to have Mickey Hart pick you up, he just didn't find you along the road. No. So you had to have a particular skill set already with you. So talk about developing that. Yeah, I was in San Francisco working with a really cutting-edge band, a band called De Cuckoo. They were an all-woman, all-electronic electronic percussion ensemble that was based in a multimedia platform, which meant they were triggering not only sounds from the stage on homemade instruments, mind you, but they were also triggering graphics and had interactive show toys like a big MIDI beach ball that they would throw into the audience and the audience would hit it and it would trigger sounds and of course graphics. So Mickey had worked with this band in producing them. So when Mickey started to build his own rig, electronic rig, he hired one of the founding members who pulled me in uh, to begin working on this project. So peeling back the onion just a little mm -hmm. bit further, we're talking about somebody who had an interest in music to begin with. So let's start there. Let's start you developing your interest in music mm -hmm. and developing your focus and the particular what you were interested in and how that happened for you. Yeah, I was raised in Pittsburgh, outside of Pittsburgh, a small little town called North Braddock. And uh, of course, at that time, it was very unusual for women to play drums. It still so let's is. Let's stop right there. Isn't, <laughs> isn't, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? I, I love to hear things like that. Yeah. Because quite often what we do is we work on people's self-concept, which is facts and information they know uh -huh. about themselves. Self-esteem, which is how you interpret those facts and information, and identity formation. And one of the sad things about today, and I didn't make this up, is that young ladies begin to lose their self-concept and self-esteem around the age of nine. So you were, you were, you were outside the box there. Perfect. But you did say the right age, nine. I was just about that, eight or nine. And I had signed up for the drums, and this is how it played out for me. I went down to the office, and uh, they handed me a baby tuba. And I said, but I signed up for the drums. And they said, well, don't you know, girls don't play the drums. Uh, who, who is they? 
It was a woman sitting at a desk. I'll never forget it. It was kind of like a fisheye lens to this eight-year-old eyes, you know, my eyes at the time. She looked over the desk and said, girls don't play the drums. And I answered, they play this, <laughs> which was a baby tuba, a euphonium. Um, I did take it home and blow it that night, and my lips swelled up as big as, you know, balloons. And my mother said, absolutely not. We are taking this back. <laughs> the next day and they drove me and that instrument back and said if we buy her the sticks and the pad will you give her lessons and they agreed okay and we always talk about they talk about they a little bit more they would be the public school system mm. you know and i have to say i am a product of the public schools and i sure. a big advocate for public schools um Yet it was a sign of the times, you know, that, that most of my expectation was set at that young age that I would grow up, marry someone from that town, have 2.2 kids, and age and die right there in that town. And, and that just wasn't going to work for me. So <laughs> what happens is, is what we help folks understand is that there's people have narratives and they have templates of their life. And in this particular case, there's a narrative about little boys. There's a narrative about little girls. There's a template on how they people should fit in. And apparently you weren't fitting quite into their puzzle pieces. No, I think it's still relevant today. And I think that we're trying to uh, challenge those uh norms that are being taught instead of teaching little girls to be a princess to be a an amazon or to be a, a warrior or a superhero so that's an excellent point excellent point so quite often we talk about on this show and we understand that people do things with the absolute best of intentions okay so when you call your daughter a little princess and 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 you do that in an endearing term absolutely so however when you look at a princess janelle when you look at a princess let's say a disney princess or a princess in a story what are they they're meek, they're quiet, they don't take up much space, they're not loud, and they're to be taken care of by mm. a male person. They're, they're to be dressed up, they're to yes. present themselves to be the most desirable yes. person rather than, and, and they're to be rescued. Yes, and absolutely. to be saved. So what we help with, Janelle, is rather than young ladies present a profile on saying, what do I have to offer? We turn that around and we challenge that. We say, I'd rather have you say, what are the requirements it takes to be with me? What are the requirements it takes to be a romantic interest and or a friend? Mm. So what we help, we help people do is to develop their values and their choices and their non-negotiables. So th these are challenge type of podcasts. And it looks like you were at that point, willing to meet a challenge. So tell, tell us some of the resistance that you faced. Well, you know, the interesting thing, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I've only been able to develop this view as I've gotten older and looking back. At the time, you know, the eight and nine and the whole preteen to teen, your hormones start to run, male or female, it's a very challenging time. And at that time, you know, you're looking for the attention of the opposite sex. You're looking to be liked. And we didn't have a Facebook or any way to get likes, so it had to come vibrationally. And I didn't really have a lot of that kind of attention, which hindsight gave me the opportunity to take this instrument, the drums, and really practice it and develop at it and become good at it. And that helped me to develop my voice. And I can't say enough about it. I've even met women in their 40s and 50s that have yet to develop their voice. Say more about developing your voice. Developing your voice, who you are, what you want, not what your mother or father have told you what you should believe or want or what your boyfriend wants for you or half of the girls or women and it's been hundreds of times that women have come up to me and said, I've always wanted to play the drums. And they do it just like that. They whisper. And I say, well, what stopped you? And it was always usually my parents or a boyfriend or some what other one wanting to control me. me. Exactly. That I would be taking up too much space and be too loud.
So quite often what we challenge people to do, we ask them to remember the first time that they heard their recorded voice being played back to them. Oh, that's good. And what what was that feeling? So most people, when they hear their recorded voice for the first time, how do they think about that? Well, I don't know. I mean, I was a small child. My father had one of those small little uh, portable cassette recorders. And I think he taped us as small children at a Christmas event. And I can remember hearing it back and you just can't even believe it's you. You say, who is that? Who it's, is it's, it? it sounds awkward, yeah. doesn't it? It's like, oh my, do I, do I really sound like exactly. that? So what we try to do is get people comfortable with the sound of their own voice. Say the words out loud and hear them rather than bounce them around inside of your head. Hear the words that you say. Here's what and we encourage people to speak to themselves as if they would speak to a friend. We ask people to give encouragement and support like they'd be talking to a friend, however, play it back to themselves. Lovely. I love that idea. The um, finding your own voice has been amazing. And now that I see this in myself, giving it away and seeing it in other girls, I teach at a teen girl rock camp, preteens in Western Massachusetts has been the most empowering and biggest thing in my life as far as knowing, which I didn't know in fifth grade when I started playing the drums, what the future of my life would be with drumming and healing and how important it would play into this day and age. And talk about the Me Too movement. You know, there you have it right there. Women are finding their voice and starting to use it. One of the things that a person feels most disrespected is when they feel they're not being heard. Yes, absolutely. And I think that it's taught from an early age. Again, I just can't say enough about what goes into, you know, Jim, as I talk about all the time, we're vibrational beings. We live in a vibrational world. We're rhythm beings. We live in a rhythm world. What goes into us basically by osmosis from the ages of zero to seven or eight is phenomenal. And what I believe sets the path for a lot of our life. You have to really be mindful, awake, and challenging to change that course of that trajectory. Well, well those are... Those are no, also known as imprint years, where our minds are like dry sponges and we soak yeah. in uh, the, the things that are around us. So when you're dealing with these young ladies, unfortunately, most people view young people as, well, they'll get over it. Okay. Or they're, they're young. They'll, they, they, they can't really feel like that. But the hurt that a 15-year-old feels, the emotional pain, is every bit as significant as somebody at 25, 35, 85, or 105. Absolutely. And their feelings and their thoughts are discounted. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with women. Oh, yes, ab absolutely. You know? Which is why I'm so impressed. I'd like to yeah. hear a little bit more about your work with these young ladies. Yeah, it's it's a phenomenal thing. Like I said, in my own experience, having known that that time when I wasn't getting the attention was the time that I used to develop myself. Let me go one step further. Then as I came out as a strong drummer, I was very cool to all the boys. So now what happened in my world, Jim, which was phenomenal, was they let me into the boys' locker room. So now I got to hear both sides of this of the coin, what was happening from the boys' angle and also from the girls' angle. And that's when I started to see the paradigm we're against at a young age. I didn't know exactly what, what it was all about yet, but I knew there was something going on that I wasn't quite clear about, and mm. it wasn't what we thought it was. So as I got the opportunity, I had the opportunity to teach at the Institute for the Musical Arts at their summer teen camps, girl camps, and preteen, I was blown away by just how f few of them had really gotten in touch with their own voice. And by using the drums, especially the big drums, the floor toms, the big loud sounds, the things that I told you that we are taught as young women not to be, not loud. to take up loud, not to be take up too much space, so you can't be big. You know, you can't sit with your legs spread across. You know, everything that goes with it. The first thing I do is get them hitting drums loudly. And it's almost frightening to them at first, like hearing your voice the first time. But then as they start to do it, they realize, oh, wow, 
there's some power here. And then by the end power. of the week, power. week and a half, the 10 days, they are quickly, they are get in touch with that voice and they embody it. And once they're there, wow, then you've got a different person the next year and the next year and their parents come back and say, whatever they did at that camp was amazing. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutfaith.com where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.